saying that what's happened in this church is the same God that was in that burning fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't matter where you're at, the Holy Ghost can be there. Because you can't stop what I'm preaching about. You can't put it in a box. You can't put it behind nothing. It takes the forefront of every time. Yeah. He said, I want to be a part of that movement. I said, you brave enough to come back? This morning, while during worship service, right before I got ready to preach, he walked to the altar, lifted his hands. God filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Within five minutes later, he's water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And he left saying, I don't want to be a part of the movement. I am the movement now. I've got to live in this shot. Can I preach to somebody in this place? What you're feeling is not old-fashioned. What you're Wesley said it like this. He said, if you catch on fire, people come watch you burn. Now, I don't think he was literally meaning catch on fire. But what he was meaning is that there is a vacuum of people in this world that is discontent with where they are and with the vision that they've got. Ladies and gentlemen, can I preach to you tonight? Jesus didn't write a book. Jesus didn't get on Facebook. Jesus wasn't running for a political office. But I'm going to tell you what he did. Is he started a movement that said if you'll preach Jesus and himself crucified, you're going to turn this world upside down. So let me say it again. Let me be redundant tonight if I can. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like his power. There's nobody like his love. His mercy is new ever morning. Yeah, hallelujah. You can't stop this. You can't stop this movement. Whatever Jesus did, he wasn't about trying to get his name written on the wall down at the local Starbucks. He wasn't about getting his name in a newspaper somewhere. He went about from town to town demonstrating compassion for those that were lost, Thank healing God those Jesus. that were sick. I'm yes, preaching Lord. to people in this room right now. If it's not you, we've got loved ones uh, that we are mentally ill. Uh, our emotions are at the roof. Uh, we don't know if we're coming or going. Uh, we're confused. Uh, we don't have the answers. Uh, but the movement I'm preaching about tonight, it's got all the answers that you need. Uh, you've met the right church. Uh, you came to the right church. Uh, this pastor will love you into a place uh, like you have never been in your life. There's something about this movement. We don't care what color your hair is. We don't care how many tattoos and piercings you may have. What we care about is getting you in the movement, in the movement, in the movement, in the movement. Amen. I was preaching somewhere between the two of us. If you tell I'm not a good preacher, but boy, I love Jesus. I was preaching somewhere between the two oceans, Pastor. I started telling about this young lady. She's a little red-headed girl. A little red-headed girl, God. She got in some trouble. Got hooked on drugs. It was in prison. Supposed to have been there 21 years in prison. Sentenced to a 21-year sentence. I don't know how God does this stuff, but I'm so glad he does. I'm so glad he does. We was there ministering in the jail system. We was there, this young lady got the Holy Ghost and she got out, but she had to wear an ankle bracelet everywhere she went. She was on house arrest. And, and her, uh, her uh, legal uh, people, they, they give her permission to come to our church every Sunday. Amen. And I was preaching about this young lady just like I'm preaching tonight. Amen. There was somebody in the crowd that did not understand that there are people like this everywhere in every home in every family. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you when I say we do not care your background. We do not care where you have been and what you have done. Amen. What we care about is that you know that we are all flawed flesh saved by the grace of a merciful God. Thank God. This is a movement. We have misfits. We have people that don't belong here. We got people that wear less shoes and that's all right because in this movement there is hope and power that goes beyond the imagination yeah, of a man that can change your life and give you new hope and meaning. I wish I had a believer in this house would realize that Jesus is walking among us and he says I will not stop the movement. Thank you Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Elvis. Hallelujah. Thank you, Elvis. Thank you, Elvis. Jesus. What did you say? Am I okay? Am I too long? Am I too long? Am I too loud? Okay. The reason I'm asking this is what I get blamed for everywhere I go. So I'm just trying to live up to my reputation. <laughs> see, see, what we forget is that Jesus was found with a misfit. Mm -hmm. right. What's a misfit? Well, anybody that you don't allow in your circle. Think about that a minute. Jesus was found with the people. That, oh, you can't be sitting over there with them, boy. They, they, they got caught oh. trying, trying to rob a doctor, put around a sewing machine last week. You, you can't be over there with them. You, 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 you can't, you can't uh, go with these people over here because, because they got a reputation, and boy, they, they just cause trouble everywhere they go. Come on. Well, I'm going to tell you right, that kind of stuff don't scare me. Somebody said, well, you're which going to remember your reputation. I'm not worried about that. Hell, hello, did, did they turn me on? <laughs> I, I, I'm seriously not worried about it. The reason I'm not worried about it is I'm a part of a movement of I don't care. <laughs> uh, this, let me talk. Uh, trust me, I had 60 people walk out of my church because I didn't care. Not that I didn't care that they left, but I don't care if I got to go across the track to get somebody. Even when it crosses our idea of what it should be like. Amen. Amen. Why would you do that? Here's the reason why. I've got three children. 27, 24, and 19. They are one breath away from making some bad decisions. Have they made bad decisions? Absolutely. Have they made decisions that were embarrassing? Absolutely. But they're still my children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Did you hear this preacher? Right? Yes, Lord. Did you hear? I'm in the Holy Ghost, Pastor. If I'm out of line, you just tell me. But the reason I go after them is because they are a part of this movement that can't stop. Right. And if I don't take that mentality for your children, right. then who's going to go after my children? Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Who's going to go after my people? Yes, Lord. Say, preacher, you, 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 you just think backwards. That's the problem with church in general. We become traditionalized. We got all kind of eyes up in here. And we forget that Jesus yeah. came to seek and to save the that which is lost. lost. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the lost are broken. The lost are hurting. Yes, the Lord. lost stink sometimes. The lost don't do things right all the time. Thank the you, lost Jesus. has not lost their way. But we that are in the movement need to get out of our churches, get in the streets, and raise a banner high and say, oh, God loves you. He cares for you. Yes, Lord. Talking about a movement. A movement. A movement. I know not of this church because Pastor, you, I believe you, you work here all the tenure of this church. You're the church planner of this church. And when you plant churches, you just you just do what you got to do. I am a church planner at heart. My wife and I moved to a city of 2,000 people. We were so poor they cut off the flashing lights in town. Everybody there, about 80% plus of that city was on government assistance. It was the poorest county in the state of Missouri. But God sent us there. And I was talked about. I had people come to me and say, I thought we sent you down there to start a white church. I said, you did. But he did. So I've been shot at all these years. You're supposed to go down there and do this. And do that. My beautiful bride and I walking down the streets of the hood. Going into areas that, my God, we probably shouldn't have been, but God's mercy and protection was all around us. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. All around us. I was praying for a couple one day. Praying for a couple one day. It was on Easter Sunday. Put my arms around them. I pulled them in tight and I prayed for them. I said, God, I'm praying that you'll give blessing and, and mercy and love to this home, God. 
I pray for their family, oh God. I pray that you use them like never before. Raise them up from where they're at and put them on the right track. I got my information two days later. I'm knocking on the door. Only to knock on the door to find out that I had been praying for a same-sex couple that was sitting in my church. I got shot at. Got shot at. Why in the name of God, Jeremy, would you do that? Because you see, I may not agree with the sin, but I've got to love that sinner. Amen. And the reason I'm going to love that sinner is I am one breath away from falling into a trap of hell that could cost me my life. And if I show mercy and love and compassion yeah, right now, this movement can't be stopped. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, preacher. I'm preaching to families in this room. You've been, been hit by hell. You're being hit by hell now. It's coming after your mind. It's coming after your philosophies, your ideas, your theology. It's coming after you. But I've come with a word from heaven to prophesy into your spirit right now. You are here in this movement. And nothing can take you away. Thank nothing you, Lord. Thank can you. push you out. Nothing can destroy you. Amen. Hallelujah. If I get out of line, just let me know. I'll quit here. Just give, give me five more minutes. I was raised in church. Been raised in church all of my life. 1975. I was born September the 26th. I don't know what day it was, but I know where it was at because my mama told me. <laughs> my mother was 16 years old. My mother was raped by a 33-year-old man. Probably drugs, alcohol involved. I was raised. My mother got in church in a church just like this. Just like this. That looked beyond her faults, her failures, her habits, her hurts, and her hate. And they welcomed my beautiful mother, 16 years old, to the house of God. My mother walked in on a midweek service on the right hand side from the pulpit, sat behind pastor's wife did not even know it. God filled her with the Holy Ghost. A few months later, I was born. Six months after I was born, my mother married my adopted father. They raised me in a Christian home. In this Christian home, I went to a Christian school. I did ACE. That's probably why I read backwards instead of frontwards. <laughs> but at least I know what a red light looks like. That's about as good as it gets. <laughs> I was raised in a Christian environment all my life. God called me into the ministry. Twelve years ago, my mother was diagnosed with colon cancer, and she passed from this life. Four years after my mother passed from this life into glory. I was working. I was a church person. I was working. That evening, I wouldn't tell you what I was doing, but it it may scare you. It wasn't at a bar, but I was an undertaker, okay? I worked in the funeral business because I love people, and I wanted that. I wanted to meet people that was hurting. It was a ministry to me. So as I was working, the phone call came and said, you need to go to your dad's house. My dad raised me in the house of God. My dad raised me in truth. My dad raised me to be right. So I approached my dad. By 3 a.m. that morning, I heard some of the most horrifying news I'd ever heard in my life. My dad looked at me and said, son, said, I've been living the life of homosexuality for the last several years. I've been doing this. This is where I'm at. And he began to share with me his lifestyle. As I looked at my dad that evening, tears began to stream down my face. You see, I had a choice. I'm speaking to somebody in the Holy Ghost tonight. I had a choice that I could make. It would be very simple. I could look at my dad and tell him how disrespectful this is. How I disagree. And the problem is going to cause our family. But I looked at my dad, tears streaming down my and I looked at him and said, you took me in when I was six months old. You clothed me 
You put food on the table that I eat all of my life. You put me through Christian education so I wouldn't have to be educated into the city system and be told things that were anti-God. You protected me all of my life. You've been nothing but the best daddy that I could have ever asked for. And I reached out and I grabbed my dad and I pulled him in and I hugged him. And I said, Dad, no matter what kind of lifestyle you live, you'll always be my daddy. And I don't care what anybody ever tells you. There's always a place called home for you. My dad looked at me and tears streaming down his face. He said, Jeremy, everything you have said is exactly what I knew you would say. Dad, why would you say that? He said, because for the last 35 years, last 40 years, he said, we have put it into you every day that you help the hurting even when you disagree. The Holy Ghost is ministering to somebody in this room tonight. What could have happened is like our scripture text that I read here this evening. Is that when they give birth, if it's a male child, I want you to kill it. If it's a female child, let it live. I could have looked at my daddy and immediately killed everything that God had already done in my life. But I said this to myself. I refuse to kill the movement that God has started. Amen. I want you to hear this preacher and I'm okay, Pastor. Okay. There is a foundation that the church must be built upon. And there's going to be times that the movement is going to be tested and tried. You do not have to compromise what you believe to keep the movement going. You do not have to compromise our worship and our dedication and our commitment to God to keep the movement going. Amen. What we must do is that when the enemy, God, I feel the Holy Ghost, is that when the enemy comes and says, you've got to kill, you need to look the devil straight in the eye and say, this church is not about death. We are all about life. And we're not about to kill our new converts. We're not about to kill our new babies. We're not about to kill our future. We're not going to put our children on a back burner somewhere because society says, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. But we, the apostolics of this city, we rise high to proclaim, you cannot kill the movement. You cannot kill it. Go ahead. You go ahead and have your organizations. You go ahead and have your movements. You go ahead and march down Pennsylvania Avenue. You go ahead and march in front of our schools. But we're going to be in the church house. And we're going to be on our faces. And we're not getting up until we hear from heaven. Because we are a movement that cannot be stopped. Oh, let me say this and then I close. I, I got this. You'll play a little bit, sis. You'll play a little bit. That'll let me know I need to hurry. <laughs> In the scripture setting that we read, the reason the new king Pharaoh wanted to take out the male children is because they did not know who Joseph was. The new king had no idea. All he knew that if I let these babies live, they're going to overtake us. There's something powerful in new people. There's something powerful in new babies. Yes, Lord. Go ahead and shoot at me if you want to. But I'd rather have a hundred new converts than ten seasoned saints that had a bad attitude. Yes, Lord. Amen. I'd rather have a thousand brand new people than one person in the church that was so holy they wasn't even in the earthly good at all. But God, give us people, give us people that will not let the movement die. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I want you to hear this preacher. Oh, I got a hush. I got a hush. Oh, 
Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. What happened? What happened? You hear me, weary child of God. You've been in this service several times today. Some of you are so tired that maybe you're ready to get home, call it in, and get your cheese and crackers and get ready for the work day tomorrow. But I want you to hear this preacher right now. God has sent me by to tell you, don't let somebody stop the movement that you've got going. Don't you let somebody come by here and throw water on this fire. Don't you let somebody come here and cloud up your mind and say, we're too busy. We're never going to get anything done because we're doing this and we're doing that. No, you're a part of a movement that's an end time revival and the greater is going to be greater than the former the latter the the former. this is what we pray for this is why we fast this is why we believe yes Lord this is why this is why I want to tell you the reason why well two reasons why I jumped my little pickup and I drove down here today one my friend invited me, and I love being around revivalists. I don't know why I'm saying this, but but your pastor gets shot at a lot. He gets misunderstood a lot. Because when you're leading in revival, you're gonna get attacked. You're, you're, you're the target because hell wants to take you out. But don't you stop, Pastor. You've got a people that believe in you. You've got a people that support you. We're here on a Sunday night. Because we are a part of a movement and we're not about to be stopped. We're a part of a movement that cannot be stopped. God have mercy. Revivalists are some of the most misunderstood people in the world. Yes, God. Tell me how, tell me how you stand, understand this. Well, we got three services today, but, but we're going to do another one on Sunday night. In the church world, that's unheard of because people laugh at it, they scorn at it. Say, man, you, you know. But when you're a part of a movement, you're trying to build something that's bigger than pastor. When pastor goes to glory, if the Lord should tarry long enough, there's got to be a movement that cannot die. Come on, the Black Lives Movement's almost faded out. Amen. There's other movements that's been through time. Amen. That's, that's faded out. And now they're, they're on this woke junk and transgender movements and those things. And we'll let that be whatever it is. Come on. But there's always somebody trying to stir something. I say we the people of God. Let's get a 